position. And over to you, Martin. Oh, hello everyone. Welcome to, I believe it to be a first live stream for the, the Can Do group. Uh, we've got a lot of jam-packed agenda today. Um, it's going to be a really, really fun, exciting session. I'm joined by Ben from Adapter Before, Mal from Spox People, and Rob from Active Hands. I'm Martin from Disability Horizons and Purple Goat. And as you're hopefully aware, this session is around uh, boosting physical and mental well-being. Um, very important topic generally, I think, in life, but with the weird and wonderful year we've been having due to this pandemic and all the other pressures of life, um, it's obviously an even more important topic to, to touch base on. Um, we hope everyone watching, you're you know, getting on well through through this crazy year as well. But I think this is going to be a nice time to yeah, to reflect a bit on, on our individual looking at the physical and, and mental well-being. Um, I just wanted to kick off a little bit about my personal experience that some of you may have seen if you follow my personal channels that I published a blog on Sunday that I'd actually decided sort of back end of summer, early autumn to um, have a bit, a couple of sessions with a therapist because I'd felt my mental health was, yeah, just sort of not in a really bad place, but I wanted to prevent it from, from getting worse. So it was a kind of prevention rather than cure action. Um, and I think for me, there'd been a bit of a stigma about admitting that to myself, let alone what others in my family and, and even being a, an influencer, probably what people might have thought. But having decided to go through uh, with that and um, you know really benefited a lot from it, um, I think with all the other things I've done in life with travels and business and all sorts of other things that I've always shared because I believe there's a lot of other people, particularly in the disability community, that you know, for have to have someone that can speak out in all those topics is really helpful um, to know you're not alone. And so that was my reason for publishing that blog. Um, and so yeah, so we've got a great team of people to to have various discussions and conversations. We've got two sessions as well, practical sessions, which is going to be really uh, helpful for you watching. And, and one of them is to get quite active um so guys i think it'd be great you know, for you all to introduce yourself and maybe just give some thoughts on on today's session and obviously if we start off more in the the mental uh, well-being side and then later on we'll have a chat more around the the physical well-being side so um we'll come to rob first i'm sort of like who to go to <laughs> rob uh, yeah it'd be great just give yourself an introduction and any personal experiences on the physical or the mental you know, well-being if, if you'd prefer. Okay, so I'm Rob Smith, so I'm the director of the Active Hands Company. We manufacture products which are essentially gripping aids or products for people with reduced hand function um, to allow them to take part in various activities. Our kind of our products started mostly in a sort of gym based area, so very much on the physical well-being side of things when I was really struggling due to spinal cord injury and reduced hand function to um, be able to access a lot of gym equipment. So um, I developed some products in that area and uh, they're used regularly by me and lots of other people. But we've kind of expanded our product range now. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm also a regular athlete, um, fairly high level wheelchair racer. Um, I've been selected for um, Paralympics GB a number of times, not for uh, Paralympic Games, but for uh, marathons and uh, that kind of thing. And training is a big part of uh, my physical and health, mental well-being um, program. Um, I would normally train every day, um, uh, although for, unfortunately, uh, as tends to happen, I've got a bit of a UTI last night and not feeling great today, so taking a, my, my day off of training today. I think that's important to you as well. Have a, have a bit of time off when you need it. Listen to your body. Yeah, well, that, thanks for the introduction. And uh, I'll say thanks for battling through not feeling on top form and still being on the live stream tonight. We all, all really appreciate that. And I think, yeah, I mean, obviously you talked about generally yeah, you're very physically active and always training. And so, I mean, we'll that. Oh, I heard a bit of an oh, echo. I heard a bit of an echo. <laughs> I think it's coming back out of I think it's coming back out of you. Sorry, say again? 
I think that, that, that it's coming out, my voice is coming out of your speaker back into your mic. I think it's okay now, though. Just a okay. glitch. <laughs> Just a little glitch. Exactly. Yeah, carry on. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, we're live, tech stuff happens, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I was just going to say, Rob, for you, sort of with this, you know, weird year of the pandemic and COVID, I mean, how have you just generally been able to look after your physical and mental well-being through this more difficult year? Um, it's been quite a struggle, I have to be honest. Um, I've got two small kids, so um, Jacob is seven uh, and uh, Zanthi is just coming up to two. Um, she doesn't really understand what's going on, but she's missing... She doesn't know it, but she's definitely missing out on like, you know, singing groups and all those groups that you take mm -hmm. a toddler to. Um, uh, and Jacob, I think uh, Joe, my wife, did a very good explanation of how things are at the moment um, to Jacob at his level in the, uh, kind of our anxiety levels are at the moment and are kind of right up here. So it only takes like a little thing, which normally wouldn't be much of a difference to our overall stress levels. And it feel, feels like a massive thing because we're already up so high with the anxiety and we're all feeling it. Um, at this time, and even if we think we're coping well, it's just that complete boost of, a, of what's going on in the world, um, which is making it a struggle. Uh, I've been trying to keep up with my training. With uh, We did manage to make it back onto the track a bit, but um, now we're back on, on rollers training and we're doing Zoom rollers training as a, a training group, and that's been in really important for my um, kind of social life, really, um, with my training group. But um, yeah, we're just trying to do the best we can, but it's, it's, it's hard times at the moment. Yeah, it is. It's, well, yeah, thanks for sharing that, Rob. And um, we'll, we'll sort of go, come to Mel for an introduction and yeah, any of your sort of experiences and thoughts in this topic area. And then we can come back to you again, Rob, if you want to sort of contribute more bits as we go as well. But thanks for that, Rob. So over, over to you, Mel. Yeah, I mean, both you and Rob have said something I want to pick up on, but yes, yeah, so I'll uh, <laughs> introduce myself first. So uh, I'm Mel and I run Spokes People, which is the services side of Spokes, which is run by my husband, Steve, and he has a spinal cord injury um, and we also have a child. And I set up Spokes People with, in collaboration with Spokes, um, you know, working with Steve and seeing that there's so much focus on the physical rehabilitation, but not, you know, how do we deal emotionally with being disabled and um, not only around what happens to our bodies, but how people treat you and everything like that. And I think the, when people um, call me up, like you said, Martin, there's so much stigma around therapy. You know, people are like, well, I don't want to be disabled and, you know, crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and the first thing I say is when we look at America, you know, people have therapists for life there. It's like they're their friend and they go and visit them every now and then. And it's not, a, there's no stigma. It's just having a space where you can say what you need to say without being shut down, without being silenced. Um, so that's the fir first thing I say. Um, and then, yeah, hooking into what you said, Rob, you know, I do so much talking around this elevated level of stress and um, you know, maybe it's helpful if I explain a bit on that. So most of us know about the fight, flight, freeze instinct. Um, and what happens is our brain is looking for a threat, it finds one, and then our instincts take over. And the good example is if we look at like a lion who's uh, chasing an antelope, um, it will first try and run away, that's the, the flight. It will then, if it's almost caught, it will try and kick out, it will try and fight back. And if none of that works and it gets caught by the lion, it goes limp. And that's the kind of freeze response and that's our body kind of being overwhelmed and shutting down to protect itself because there's a small chance if we kind of play dead that the lion might think oh I don't want to eat this dead animal we'll walk away and then what happens is the antelope will get up it will wake up and it will shake and then it will just go back to eating grass or whatever it was doing and we call that the resting state down here and for some reason that there's lots of theories around people have lost the skill of doing the shaking to get rid of all this pent up energy that's in our bodies and so we struggle to get to this resting state and in today's society there's so many things that are threatening to our brains even though they're not life and death situations our brain perceives it like that so they kick us into that fight flight and then on top of that when you're disabled living with disability there's so many negative situations and threatening situations coming up daily like when someone 
you know, blocks you in in the car park and you need to get to a meeting and you're going to be late or you can't pick your child up because you can't get there in time. Um, so heightened vigilance being on this higher level is really common among uh, people living with disability and their family members. And what that means is we just have to work harder to get to that place of rest. Um, and COVID has is, is been a major stressor in our family too. I was just saying to you, Martin, you know, our PA uh, was unable to do social distancing in her life. So we had to decide to not her, let her come into our house for several months and, um, you know, manage all of our jobs as a family without it. So, um, yeah, you know, feedback from lots of people has been, you know, there's a lot of overwhelm, a lot of anxiety um, and, uh, you know, people struggling to get to this place of rest. So hopefully today um, I can show some simple things that people can practice to try and bring that down. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Belle. Well, um, we'll, we'll come to Ben to, to get your opening thoughts and obviously introduction to what you get up to. And then we'll be coming back to you, Mel, afterwards for our for our first session. So thank you for that, Mel. And over to you, Ben. All right, thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Ben Clark. I run Adapt to Perform, which is the world's largest YouTube channel, which is dedicated to fitness and well-being for wheelchair users. Um, the reason I started it was about three years ago, well, th nearly four years ago now, actually, um, I was looking online for some fitness videos to help me in the gym to get fit and strong and healthy. but I was really struggling to find stuff and being uh, of the age I was at the time, I'm the YouTube generation where we get, you know, look on YouTube for everything, for information, and I couldn't find anything. So I thought, why not just do it myself? Uh, I have a experience of being a professional swimmer before my injury, which I had 10 years ago now, uh, and I had a little bit of experience of being a professional swimmer afterwards. So I thought I could take that sort of knowledge and then combine it with um, what I know about YouTube and then, yeah, start to make some videos for people and uh, since then I've done nearly 400 videos um, I live stream well I live stream most of the way through lockdown I did 140 days in a row which was uh, uh, Martin you know how tiring it is to do a lot of live streaming every day <laughs> so yeah um, that was pretty good uh, it was good fun and it was it was kind of uh, combining what we talk about here both the medical uh, the mental side of it and the physical side of it um, because during this time a lot of people are feeling isolated, not just physically, but mentally isolated away from friends and families. And I thought it was really important to help build the community that I had and sort of introduce everybody to each other through these live streams. So, yeah, it was, I thought it was a great way to be able to reach out to those people that really needed it at the time. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. Um, and like for me personally lockdown's actually been quite great because building this community means that I've made friends from all around the world I haven't just um you know I haven't been by myself because I've been you know adapting to the situation and it, it's kind of like when Rob does his workouts with his um uh, wheelchair racing team you know they're getting together and they're meeting up socially it's not quite the same but at least we're hitting on a part of it where we can still get that interaction which is super important yeah that's cool and I know uh, something I really took out of what you shared is that you you know, gave a lot and showed up a lot with the live streams and that community sort of was formed around you and we're going to talk a bit more later about community but I can tell that that was a a big part of what was sort of you you, you know, enjoyed giving to the community but I'm sure you got a lot out of serving them as well so that's really really yeah, cool to sure. hear that I know you're going to be doing our second session later the practical yep. session so i'm looking forward to to getting a bit active on this uh tuesday evening excellent cool. so i believe that um mel's going to do a session now it's going to involve i think sharing a, some a screen as well so i'm going to turn the camera off and pass that over to you mel and uh looking forward to, to joining you for this with all the viewers as well okay well, hopefully there's a little bit of a, a physical element with what I'm going to talk uh -huh. about as well. <laughs> Not as uh, strenuous, but um, I guess you know, the first thing I want people to think about is, um, you know when um, our guts kind of go haywire when we're stressed. And uh, not only is our brain really important, but also our guts. And when we get into this kind of overwhelm state, um, our brain and our gut are kind of egging each other on. 
And uh, the key is that um, is trying to interrupt that process and say, oh, calm down. I'm not in a life threatening situation here. So that's what these exercises are for. And I would just encourage people to try them just once a day, a few times a week for maybe three weeks. You know, if you can give it like 20 goes, you'll have a bit of an idea if it's going to work for you uh, or not. Um, and I also just want to suggest, I'm going to hold this book up and I'll put the link in the comments, this book by Peter Levine called Healing Trauma. And um, it's a very short, look, very thin book, which is always helpful to people who are overwhelmed with a CD in the back. And he explains how our bodies hold this tension and cumulatively hold it. And it's a program very simply to help release that tension. So I recommend that as well as these two exercises. So the first one is called um, STAR, and it's an abbreviation that stands for smile, take, a uh, breath and relax. And um, again, it's all about interrupting this fight flight instinct. So what you do is you smile and you take a breath and you let it out. And as you let it out, the idea is that the letting out breath needs to be longer than the in breath because the letting out breath is what interrupts the stress process. So smile, take a breath. And let it out. If you're able to, you can extend your breath by doing a fuff sound like fuff or frog. So you first do a f and then completely to empty your lungs, you end on a s like a snake. And if you do the fizz and the sizz, you can really empty your lungs a lot and do a really long, long breath. So you can do that. So that's quite easy. Star, smile, take a breath and relax. And But you can also add some things in to make it um, more beneficial. As you're breathing out, you can add in an affirmation like, I am managing or I am going to manage this. Sometimes what I, I've done myself, and these are all exercises that I've been doing in lockdown, is you can rub a nice oil on your hands and as you're breathing in, you can put your uh, hand over your face and breathe it in. Uh, and the other thing you can do instead of the breathing out is you can do what's called a voo sound. So that goes like this, smile, voo, which makes people a bit embarrassed if there's people around. But this voo sound, research have found, interrupts this brain gut mechanism. Uh, with some people that I've worked with, they said, oh, I can't do voo <laughs> round, you know, I've got PAs and all sorts of people walking around. So I've, you can, we've also tried humming that, uh, again, when you hum, you can feel it uh, kind of reverberating in your stomach. And again, you can add that on. So you can do it very simply if you want to do it privately, just the star by itself, or you can add these little bits in um, to see if it gives you extra benefit. Then the second exercise, if you're able to do this, um, is a bending exercise. And again, they have somehow researched it. You know, I found this exercise that again, it interrupts this fight flight mechanism. So I'm going to push my chair back and show you very simply what to do. I'm going to stand through my screen a little bit so you can see me. And so really all you do is you bend over and you just hold the back of your legs and you just breathe gently in and out as you're doing that. And then if there's time at the end, I'll show one of Peter Levine's um, exercise for overwhelm. And that's helpful if you can't do that bending over exercise. There's another one that you can do. And um, so that that's it for that bit for now. Um, I agree totally with, ben, with Ben's angle as well, that there's so many different ways to look after yourself and to release this tension in our bodies. My husband Steve from Spokes has uh, used Ben's services um, to help with his tension. And I also hold a lot of tension up here in my neck and shoulders. So I've used the same exercise as Ben and they've been really helpful for me too. So I try and do them a few times a week when I feel the kind of anxiety tension building. There's lots of other ways like going outside, sitting near the window, finding beauty in everyday life and trying to appreciate all the little things. So we've been shielding almost since March. Um, so it's been quite hard for our family. Um, I, I made friends with a lovely spider in my bathroom 
And <laughs> I posted on our Facebook page that every evening I would go in and he was back in the window. And I would just say, hello, spider. And just those little things was like, okay, I don't feel totally alone in our little bubble. Um, there's, there's other things going on out there. And the window cleaner came and washed him away, sadly. <laughs> I was really sad. So I'm hoping that a new spider friend will come and, and live in my window, in my bathroom. But um, yeah, and Martin's going to talk a, a bit more about peer support. And that's really important, uh, I think, as we've all said. So um, we're now going to go to a video of the Can Do Group and all the different companies uh, that are in that, as some of you might be wondering who we all are. that's explained a little bit more about the the can do group um obviously if you have any other questions for for the whole group or for individual members then um yeah we'll, we'll all of the, the you can ping us on facebook messenger and all the other social channels that are out there right and an email etc so yeah hopefully that was helpful so um as we mentioned earlier particularly what some of the things that ben had said that thing about community is really important 
Um, and I think, uh, yeah, also we can sort of refer to it as as peer to peer and lots of different terminology. But it's about having that that group of people that you can obviously share experiences, sort of to, to communicate, get it off your chest, and sort of get out your own head, and just have people around you that that understand kind of what you're going through. But I think there's that two way side uh, with community that it's also about being able to listen to others and give advice or just generally be that that ear as well and i think that's been one of the things we found with disability horizons as some of you may be aware i'm the co-founder and so whilst it, it's a magazine disabilityhorizons.com is where all of the articles go and there's lots of great articles by the community for the community on all sorts of topics from fitness to travel to relationships etc but we've found that the D Horizons tribe, which is a Facebook group for a lot of the people that wanted to not only just read the articles, but to, to share those experiences I just said before, has been really, really powerful. And we've had a lot of feedback that while we've had this quite isolating year in some ways, that there have been the ways to you know, be in the Facebook group or you know have little Zoom calls off of it, whatever it, it might be. And so it's been really nice just looking back since we've had these two lockdowns now, how we've been able to do virtual events and bring people together very much like we are right now. Um, so that's just kind of my two pennies worth on the power of community, particularly in this year of, of COVID. But as always, it'd be good to come back to you guys and just any experiences or thoughts you've got on community as well. So we'll go re reverse order. So Ben, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, um, as you say, like the community for me has been so important um, during lockdown. Um, it means that I'm not just talking to my girlfriend, which is handy. <laughs> uh, it means I'm talking to other people and uh, I'm lucky enough, one, to be part of the Can Do group where I get to meet other people that are um, going through, you know, similar sort of, you know, we're all going through like coronavirus stuff together um, during lockdown. And it's really good to interact with others and find out what other people are doing, how they're coping with it, how they're interacting. So from the business side of things, it's been fantastic like that. Uh, and from my own personal community that we sort of built through, it's amazing the how it's connected people in a way that um, they haven't necessarily done before. Um, so I've got people from all over the world um, joining in on my um, videos. And before this, it was sort of, you know, they comment on the videos and then I recognize their names popping up every now and again, but now, you know, having the live streams, they can interact with each other and then having zoom calls as well. Um, and it's amazing because they've communicated outside of my stuff as well. So they've made their own little mini communities that they can join up. And when I'm not live streaming, they can live stream as well. So that's, I feel like, um, there's some great ways to adapt to the current situation. Um, and it's just by, doing what you would do if you were new in a new town you you sort of go out there and find the communities because they are they are out there and they are welcoming and they're um yeah they you can normally find one that's right for you so it's pretty yeah, awesome i think great. thanks benny just actually reminded me that those of you watching right now on the live we are going to have a q a when we've um after ben's session after we finish this this round table chat as well so if you have any questions for any of us individually, any of us um, as a broader sort of can-do group type question, or even just want to share your experiences. How are you finding with your, your physical and mental well-being? We'd love to, to hear your experiences too. And obviously, if you're watching it back later, we might not be able to know what the question was. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not able to time travel, unfortunately, with all this tech going on here today. Time travel is not quite there. But um, as, yeah, still do share your questions and experience and we'll pick that up afterwards as well but if you're watching live get your questions in and we'd love to answer them a bit later in today's session so over to you mel community what what does that mean to you what's the importance of community how's it been this year with covid yeah i think community has always been important i remember the first couple that we met where one person had a disability and I was like, yes, get in. <laughs> because, there, you know, just having that understanding what daily life is like, you know, because so often people just don't want to know or don't get it. 
Um, it has been challenging because, like I said, we've been shielding for quite a long time. Um, I guess I'm grateful of the tech, you know. Um, both me and Steve have been Skyping, Zooming, <laughs> WebExing, all sorts of uh, programs with with people that we know, WhatsApping, and um, yeah, I, I think personally, I had to take make the choice to reduce some of my work, and I think that's important to say as well that sometimes you have to choose and that your well being has to go first for your own situation. Um, but um, yeah, what we've tried to get out and you know meet in parks and make as much of those opportunities, which was easier during the summer, and um, yeah, just keep trying to use the Skype and Zoom. We've done online quizzes and uh, online murder mysteries and <laughs> all sorts of ways to make it fun. Because we notice like you, you end up just talking to someone and you're like, well, what's, you know, I have relatives that live in other countries. So I'm like, well, what's going on with COVID for you? You know, and then it's like, oh, let's talk about something else. <laughs> okay. Um, so having these kind of online quizzes and games has been, uh, has been really helpful. And for me and Steve, we've also, uh, taking the time to make use of the uh, isolation that we've suddenly we've got our board games out and we're like well let's switch the tech off and let's play some Scrabble or Boggle <laughs> you know? and uh, and that's been you know really important to have a bit of balance, uh, mm. balance so yeah. you make three really interesting points there I think that the thing around um, having community where you know other disabled people is really powerful like forget COVID I've just always over my life there's been times at primary I was the only person with a disability and then secondary there was like a unit of disabled students but amongst non-disabled students and I think that it's almost a balance is quite powerful there that we're not only defined by disability but we're very embracing of those differences we experience and there's nothing better than having someone else that experiences that to, to chat it through it with as well so that was one point second one about how this year with the COVID we've had to really embrace the digital world with all like the zoom google hangout you know all that i said webex all those things it's been certainly weird and wonderful as i keep using that that expression but yeah upskilling on all the the video stuff and it's become more normal i think it always used to be a bit weird even a year ago it sometimes was a bit weird on video calls but i think we're more we're all more used to it and the third thing about switching the tech off still and the the, the old school board games like kasha and i have played a bit of battleships and chess and <laughs> that's been so nice to to not only just be on the laptop even when it was socializing on the laptop it was still a laptop so yeah lots resonated with me there so thank you mel and, and rob how about you with community I thought it was interesting, Mel, bringing up the um, Zoom or online um, quizzes and stuff like that. It, it definitely was a novelty at the start, wasn't it? Like in that first lockdown period, we're all like, "Was there's an online quiz tonight and everyone will, you know, have their dinner together or get a glass of wine and do an, an online quiz. And um, it seems certainly for me that that was because, you know, it was it was such a novelty at the start. It was quite exciting. But now it's sort of become day to day life. Um, it's not quite as exciting anymore. Um, and you know everyone's got to got the hang of the technology like you're saying already you know we're quite used to jumping on a, a zoom call or whatever it is um you know i look at my zoom schedule for a week and you know i'm booked in for sort of six or seven zoom chats over various days with various people um which is great but um there is a you know a, a sense that you're just missing out on the way that you can communicate like it doesn't work quite the same on zoom and i really miss that like mm. just for me you know, generally has to be one person talking. You can't have sort of spontaneous conversation quite so easily. Um, and I really miss just little things like going into the office um, and meeting as a team rather than doing it on Zoom um, and just that kind of office chat. Um, like I said earlier, my um, racing group has been really good and it was lovely that we could get back to training down the track over the summer. Um, and it is a community that I really um, appreciate being able to be part of um even on zoom uh, it just gives us that little outreach from you know the very small bubble that you end up getting in with your family which is which is great and, and 
you know, as all of you have said, you do get a bigger, better closeness. You know, you have time to to spend, particularly when it was um, homeschooling as well, which is very hard work. But um, you know, it was. I know you do that all the time, don't you, Mel? You you homeschool. But um, yeah, we we found that uh, very different. And I think Jacob, um, our seven-year-old, was really missing his friends. But there was a chance to, you know, have more time as a family and that little small community as a family. That was that was great. And we were at the time we were able to go outside a lot more easily um, because the weather was better. But um, yeah, I, I, there's something that's not quite the same about a, a Zoom or a video chat, which I do really miss. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting back to that. I think it's going to be a long, hard winter to not be too grim about it all. But um, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to when the weather gets better and we can start just seeing each other in person and those interactions um, become a lot more a lot more easy to do, I think, and a lot more natural. Yeah, um, no, I think we would agree that it's definitely not yeah. the same as, as being in person for sure. Yeah. Um, and I you say yeah. about the Zoom, not you know, not being able to have the spontaneous chats as easily. And so the quote of the year is your microphone's muted, isn't it? Like yeah. everyone's had that one happen to them at some point. So. <laughs> Yeah, and as you say about the the winter ahead, I mean we we are where we are, and it's there's no. Um, I've talked a couple of times the last couple of weeks about how I've tried to look at what I can control and not focus on what I can't control, and that that sort of uh, framework, mental framework. So I mean, you touched upon your training, Rob, which um, sort of moving it now into the physical well-being side of our chat. But I mean, obviously, physical well-being it's inclusive of exercise, but as broader points as well, you know, sleep, diet, all of that side effects are physical and mental well-being really. But have there any other things you've sort of found over the lockdown or over this year that you, you've changed or just tried to continue doing to look after physical well-being? Uh, is this to me? Yeah, yeah, back to you, Rob, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've tried to maintain as much as a regular routine as possible, even though it's been slightly changed. Um, I think in the first lockdown, it was just a bit of like, oh, let's, let's have a glass of wine, a bit of chocolate in the evening, yeah, and watch watch the news about the coronavirus. And uh, I tried to avoid doing that quite so much in in, in lockdown too. Um, and um, yeah, just trying to sort of maintain as much um, normality as possible. Um, I'm really missing being able to go down to the actual gym. Um, try to set up what I can at home, and I'm sure Ben will expand on what options there are on the home exercise front um, soon but um, it, it's just it's not quite the same there um, but I think having some sort of structure to your day some sort of um, goals to try and maintain um, is a good idea I'm again struggling with that because generally my goals are or well, there's a race you know I've got a marathon to do yeah. or I've got a half marathon to do in a month's time that's my goal get ready for that but everything's been cancelled <laughs> literally yeah. Things came in, they just went, you know, as soon as the lockdown two happened. So I've, uh, I've not had any races to look forward to um, or to, to have goals to, to look forward to. So, um, yeah, I'm just trying to, you know, keep my keep myself physically active, um, try and maintain that routine as much as possible. Um, yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll um, continue that way and, uh, and, and see if we you know, can maintain some sort of fitness by the time we come out of all this. So what wine and chocolate is the answer, right? <laughs> wine, wine and chocolate was the uh, was the, the go-to at the, certainly at the end of uh, of um, lockdown one. Yeah, lockdown uh, one. Yeah. Is I'm it, is to it now kale, kale and smoothies now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You still want a little treat in the evening, though, don't you? Just yeah, for sure. Yeah. That's that's something nice, but yeah. um, and that's the balance, isn't it? There's still that having something to look forward to, and that yeah. sort of stuff as well. Cool. And Mel, well, what's your what's your sort of general thoughts on physical well-being this year? Yeah, very important. Definitely noticed that we're all a lot less fitter in our household. <laughs> and um, but yeah, I think going into what Rob says, having that structure is good. So trying to um, okay, we're not as hardcore in the exercise. I don't think in our household, but at least every day trying to take ten minutes to do some stretches, warming up. Um, definitely for me, I feel that helps the tension in my body. Uh, you know, you, what I was saying, using Ben's exercises and some other ones. And um, yeah, and then just trying to get out. Even we've been making it a habit to just take letters to the letterbox and, you know, 
biking, scooting, whichever way we can get there. And, um, you know, trying to build little moments in where we're changing scenery and getting a bit of exercise. And, yeah, I think like Rob's saying, you know, the diet is very important as well. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that some people are a bit fatigued in lockdown too. And so, you know, there's maybe a sense of, oh, well, I've already put on so much weight. Oh, you know, I might as well just carry on. And, and, and winter has that effect on people anyway, doesn't it? Coming up to Christmas, putting on weight. Um, so I, yeah, I think it's just being mindful of of that. So we've been trying to like at the weekends take time to prepare a really nice new recipe that is still healthy. So you know um, the love that goes into the process of the food making kind of compensates for the lack of junk food. <laughs> yeah, well, you were talking earlier a bit about mindfulness, where right? you're sort of enjoying the little things and your spider that <laughs> I would say. Yeah, even with the the food, it's about partly something to look forward to, but also enjoying the the process of of cooking and things like that as well. I like taking a bath. You know, I've made a conscious effort to book that in. No one disturb me. I'm having bath time. Yeah. You know, all these little ways that we, you know, can look after our physical well-being as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're building up to to Ben's session. It'd be great, Ben, as well, to obviously just give some thoughts and then go straight into your session but just to give one final call out to everyone watching if you've got any questions any comments then when after ben's done the session we'll be taking your questions for a q a finale shall we call it although i think this uh this fitness session where ben is going to be the the fireworks of the <laughs> of the show um so yeah get your questions and you can just comment on the live stream and uh i've got some helpful assistance sending over to me uh, any questions to get from you so final call for questions and ben over to you yeah so with um the physical side of things because obviously that's where like my area of expertise is um it's been really interesting during lockdown because for me like rob going to the gym is sort of a ritual almost it's like something i do i normally do it five times a week go to the gym i see my usual friends i have my routine that i do and it's been weird not doing that. Um, so adapting the fitness um, to the home life is been kind of a two-sided story in terms of like one side, it's been really fun and exciting trying all these new things and uh, experimenting with it and coming up with ways to adapt what I kind of was doing before, but at the same time missing some of like, you know, I don't, I obviously during lockdown I'm, if anybody tried to ever get any fitness equipment it's basically impossible and if you do get it it's ridiculously priced so like I for example I haven't got the heaviest dumbbells so trying to adjust the workouts to adjust to what I have got has been a fun challenge but a challenge nonetheless uh, and the bit through that and having help with the community as I said before um, and sharing ideas off each other because one thing I you know do is I try and adapt all my fitness uh, routines for as many people as possible uh, which is not always possible to get everybody but we try and work so it doesn't matter if you're uh, or heavily disabled or if you're um, whatever end of the spectrum you might be on that at least you can get um, a good workout in with what you've got lying around your house which is kind of what I'm going to be showing today is uh, uh, I I thought about doing one workout, but I thought I'm going to do three mini workouts uh, that equate to about a workout and show you sort of some different ways to uh, use things that you've got around your house or to what things that I would recommend that if you were to go and get some equipment for your own house, because it doesn't look like we're going to be out of this anytime soon. Well, we might be, I don't, <laughs> who knows where we're going to be, but it's still great stuff to have uh, even for when like you travel or for uh, just your own use, say, there's always situations when we can't get to the gym or can't do what we want to do so it's good to have these things on standby so we can still get that workout in and fitness in because it's um the fitness for me is um it's especially at the time now it's so important for your mental well-being you know releasing that serotonin giving you a routine giving you structure if it's something you do every day uh, or every other day or whatever your routine might be it gives you that structure which helps you with your uh, focus and all that throughout the day and it helps you achieve tasks I know every morning I 
well, I say every most mornings, <laughs> I get up and do a yoga routine, and that really helps just to set the day and make you know make sure that I'm in the right frame of mind. And then later on, I'm doing my workout as well, and it gives that structure to the day, and I feel like I'm a bit more productive. But also on the physical side of things, it helps with stuff like my posture, because obviously, even though I'm still exercising, I'm not going out and pushing my wheelchair, I'm not getting in and out of the car as much, so I'm not moving as well as much as much as I would normally do. So it's really great to get that you know body moving as much as I can because it's just going to be a lot of TV or a lot of sitting at the computer editing videos otherwise so uh, it's not too much of uh, the usual activity day-to-day -day stuff and uh, also so with the posture that obviously helps with stuff like our breathing which if we get in uh, better lung capacity that's going to help us fight off anything if we do get anything whether that's regular coughs or colds that's a UTI like Rob's got at the moment, <laughs> uh, helping us through that period and making sure that we get through it quicker, our immune systems are as best as they can be and that we can get back to our usual sort of routine once we get through the other side of it. So yeah, it's uh, so it's been a challenge, it's been fun and it's been, uh, it's been good. And uh, yeah, I've been really enjoying the community side of it as, as we said earlier. Um, so yeah, I think without further ado, I'll get on with uh, showing you some workout routines that you can do um obviously if you i'm going to show you some equipment here as well if you don't have any of the equipment do not worry um i'm going to show you some things that you might have around the house some that you might not and some that if you were going to get some equipment to help boost your routine that it's as low cost as it can be so i'm just going to pin my screen here so you can uh, see me bigger and then we will get on with that okay so just taking my headphone out otherwise i'm gonna end up with it around my neck <laughs> okie dokie all right so the first thing i wanted to show you is something that i came up with before lockdown actually which was a way to get cardiovascular fitness in without pushing your wheelchair or hand cycling which is the usual way so all it is is just to to mix it up a bit and it's especially good for people that do struggle with pushing maybe you're in an electric chair or maybe you're a, you know, a high level quadriplegic or cerebral palsy or whatever it might be. Um, if you've got any sort of upper limb function, then it can be really helpful to do that rather than the wear and tear on the shoulders from pushing the, it. We change it up a little bit and we're gonna use a pole just like so. So with the pole, we can do a variety of exercises here. And uh, this is just a bit of PVC pipe from a hardware store, but you can use a broom handle or you can just use a stick from wherever you can find a stick. And then with that, we can just use some like paddling forwards and then we can do like some paddling backwards. Like, so we're pretending we're in a kayak sort of thing. We can do some forward motions, some overhead like that. And then sort of a side to side. And you can really sort of have a play around with it. So each sort of couple of weeks, I try and come up with some new exercises to do. So our latest one was the rainbow one coming over like so and just doing those. So if you have got a pole at home, um, you can just grab that and you can join in if you want. And um, we're just gonna go for a, a quick routine through and uh, as we're doing it, I'll explain how you can turn this into a sort of a full session. So the first one we can do is sort of paddling forwards, as I said before, and we can do this for 30 seconds. So we just go forwards. And what we're doing here is sort of interval training. So we go 30 seconds forwards, and then what we do is have 30 seconds rest after that. Um, and you can do this with different exercises. So say for the first one, we're say paddling forwards, having rest for 30 seconds, and then you can either repeat that same exercise for a couple of times, and then do a different exercise for a couple of times, and then you know, end up doing sort of somewhere between sort of 10 and 20 rounds of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. Uh, and you can change lots of the variables here. So if we rest here, so it's gonna be about, about you know, 30 seconds here, and then you can change up the exercise next. So the next one could be here and then above, or you could do the twist one, and mixing and matching it up, and let's say changing the variables is what we can do here. So you can have more exercise time, less rest time, and come up with a sort of a program there. Um, and if you got access to a uh, mobile um, that has apps, then you can download a HIT interval timer. Uh, so it's just H-I-I-T, 
And then on that, you can customize your workout and it means that you're hands-free. You can put it up on the side and it will tell you when to go, when to stop, and you can customize the amount of rounds and the rest you do. So it's a really great way to throw in some uh, exercise here. All right, so we go again for the next one. So it's 30 seconds up and forwards. Good stuff. So as I said, we're doing three mini workouts here just to give you an idea of how you can adjust it. And you don't have to do it exactly how I'm doing it. You can just make up your exercises. You can uh, adapt it on the fly. Um, as I said, it's all about making sure that you're working uh, to the best ability that you can work at. Uh, don't worry about uh, what other people are doing and all that stuff. Okay, good. And uh, so with these pipes, or what a broom hand or whatever you've got, it can be for some people quite tricky to hold on to them, and that's where a fantastic product comes in um, that Active Rob sells for Active Hands, and I've had mine for uh, ten years now, and you can use this to grip hold. I've just got about enough grip here to hold onto that, so I don't need it. But you can use these gloves, and this helps you grip onto it and lots of other things. I'm going to be showing you that in the last mini workout we've got here. So let's put this pole to the side. And so there, they are very mini workouts. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the next piece of equipment that I swear by, which is a resistance band. So I've got a couple of different types here, or a couple of different resistances. And my favorite type of resistance band is these looped ones. And the reason for this is because they are super compact when you want to go traveling. So I like to travel a lot, obviously not at the moment as much, but when I travel, I can stick this in my luggage and anywhere I go, I've got essentially a portable cable machine. So this is fantastic and I can do majority of my workout with just this one little piece of equipment. So, and uh, compared to a lot of other gym equipment, it's relatively inexpensive. So. Um, I'm going to show you some stuff you can do with it just in your own hands so we can do some exercises where we're pulling it apart just like so and this is working on our back muscles and our rear deltoids and just getting in that sort of exercise here and that's going to really help us with our posture strengthening up here so we're less rounded in the shoulders so again I'll just show you from the side so you can see that there and for this you can do sort of three sets of 10, sort of a basic, simple workout that you would uh, usually see in fitness programs, three sets of 10 of that. And then you can do other exercises here, so you can have it behind our backs, I'll go to the side here, and then pushing forwards, just like so. Or we can do stuff where we even hold it in the hand, in one hand, so we've got this hand here, and we do like tricep extensions, we can do overhead press, and lots of other types of exercise. So the limit here is really your, the limit of your imagination. So imagine how you can do an exercise, link it up, and then you can do those. The other way we can use these bands is, so that's it, uh, not attached or anything, but I've got another one here attached up to my table leg. I will say though, if you ever attach this to anything, make sure it's nice and stable. It's not gonna move or fall over um, because I've done that before and uh, it's not been free. So <laughs> make sure it's nice and uh, secure on. And we can do stuff here. And then this is essentially, like I was saying, the cable machine. So we can do stuff like tricep extensions. We can do rows. We can do the face pull type of stuff. And then we can turn around and do the other, so we can come to our side. We can do internal shoulder rotations and external shoulder rotations, which are fantastic, again, for our shoulder health. And then we can do, starts coming to the chest pressing, and then again, turning right the way around and pressing forwards and getting that chest work out in. So with this one resistance, you can start with just one resistance band. And from there, you can really build up a nice program with that and use a lot of different uh, exercises. And say it's basically a portable cable machine if you can tie it up to something. And then the last thing I was gonna show you was the active hands grips. Oh, I will say actually, one second on there, 
the resistance band. If you do struggle with grip, then again, Active Hands make a couple of products, and I combine mine sometimes, especially if I'm going a little bit heavier. I get the, uh, the D-ring here. I attach a carabiner, make sure it's a climbing carabiner and not a uh, um, like one used for uh, attaching keys to a chain because again that's a, a recipe for disaster. Uh, and then I clip that to the resistance band and then I've got my hands free there to be able to do that. So that's a really great way to do that if you have got any um, limitations in your grip. So let's get this one set up here. So just gonna grab a dumbbell. So the one things, obviously resistance band is great for the cable machine, but sometimes we like to use some dumbbells and do stuff like bicep curls, tricep extensions, overhead press, lateral raise, all sorts of exercises that you can do here with this. I'll just attach this one up. And this allows me to be able to do anything where I need to grip hold of something. So I said, I've had these for 10 years and they still are working very well. And just gonna get that in there. Like so. And then with this, as I said, we can do lots of things. So now my hand is locked in here, which is really handy. Pardon the pun. Um, and then we, yeah, we can do stuff like bicep curls, we can do overhead press, we can do tricep extensions if you've got that ability, you can do raising up to the side, up to the front, we can almost lean forwards and do it up to the back here. Rear flies, again the limit here is your imagination. And again we could do this for like sets, we can do 3 sets of 10, 4 sets of 12, whatever it might be, uh, adjusting it to whatever weight that you've got at that time. So hopefully with those three sort of ideas there, it gives you an idea of how you can develop a program at home. So with the cardio, we can improve our cardiovascular endurance. With the resistance band, we've got a portable cable machine that can help with stuff like your posture. And then with the active hands combined with a dumbbell, active hands obviously if you need them, um, we can get in some strength as well. So we're covering majority of our fitness there. On top of that, there's other things you can do. Um, obviously there's lots of components of fitness. We can improve our flexibility by doing some yoga movements. Um, and there's plenty that we can do there. Um, but if you guys ever wanna know more about how to adapt fitness routines or anything like that, you can come and join me on Adapt to Perform. I've got nearly 400 workouts and I go live three times a week. So feel free to come along and join one of those sessions. Uh, it'll be a pleasure to have you there and uh, be uh, awesome for you to meet the rest of the gang. Alrighty, I'm gonna come back over to everybody else now. And then, there we go, we're all back now. <laughs> well done then. I am impressed with the workout and impressed with your produ production abilities, but doing both at the same time is, uh, is formidable. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for that, there's a lot of helpful tips there and i'd like to think there were people you know doing it along live but as we said earlier if it's something that they want to um come back to later or tomorrow or in the week obviously this this live stream will be available to, to come back to as well so if you if you didn't quite get into it now don't worry you'll be able to watch it back as well um so we are getting nearer the end of our our time together uh we've got a, a little bit now of a q and a um, there's not a lot of actual direct questions, but there's been quite a few comments and a few of them have been shared with me. So one of them was uh, from Loop, who was saying, wow, 140 days of live streaming in a row during lockdown is a lot. Ben, how did you keep your energy levels high and remain so enthusiastic every day? Um, it remains a mystery to me. Uh, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, basically, um, it was again the community that helped me through it. It wasn't like, although it was 140 days in a row in fitness, it wasn't like, you know, hard work every single day. So we had days where we were doing yoga or active recovery and having a chat. And to begin with, it was just 20 minutes every day just to come together as a community, have a chat, have a bit of a workout and carry on. And it was really the community that kept me going, you know, having that 
um, sense of um, responsibility to, to them and also to have that feedback. You know, if I do this every day, it's part of my routine, it's part of what I'm doing and it really def- definitely helps. So if anybody is struggling with starting a fitness routine, then having that accountability with other people is a really great way to start. And I'm sure Rob could say the same with his fitness group. If he's not there, he feels like he's almost letting down. Well, I won't speak for you, Rob, but... Uh, <laughs> It was interesting while you were doing your workout, I was uh, taking note of it, but I was also downloading a hit timer because that's <laughs> something that I do a lot more of. Um, so I think next time I do my workout, I'll take on board some of that stuff and I'll use my new downloaded hit timer. So Excellent. that was really good to see that. <laughs> cool. So um, did anyone else, Rob or Mel, did you want to add anything? I don't suppose you maybe know the answer to how Ben kept motivated from his 140 <laughs> odd days, but... Was well, Martin, anything... how about yourself? Because you did a lot of live streaming. How yeah. did you stay motivated to do what, your daily sip? Yeah, I, I think some of the stuff we mentioned earlier about routine and habit is, you know, when you conform, there's a really good book. I haven't yet read it, but I know everyone's shared it as the book about forming good habits called Atomic Habits. So I definitely recommend anyone that hasn't read that book to, to give it a go. It's been very highly regarded and yeah it once it became a habit a bit like for you but it just sort of you're just there and you're just doing it and it's just quite um doesn't take a lot of overthinking you're just in in the zone and not in a flow state it really did sort of become quite a flow state and it all felt quite easy and quite natural mm-hmm. but then when i stopped after four months i was like how did i manage that so it, it does take its toll and it is quite a lot of um planning and arranging and just giving energy while you're presenting live to lots of people. But yeah, it's, uh, as you say, that that community side powers definitely powered me a lot as well too. Not to get competitive, but how many days in a row did you do, Martin? <laughs> I don't think I beat Ben. It, I know that it was for four months. So if yeah. there's, and it wasn't weekends. So if it's okay. like 20 days a month times four, so I, I might have got up near 100 maybe, but yeah, it was no 146. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting about the reciprocity that I'm hearing, you know, not only, you know, is there a kind of pay it forward, so you, you know, you're helping those in the community by sharing your stuff, but you're also gaining yourself and, and in a way therapies like that too, in that, um, you know, I learn as much from the people that I talk to as the other way around. And um, I think that's really important particularly for disability where you often feel like it's a one-way system and um that reciprocity yeah yeah yeah, i totally agree with that so someone called matthew is asking about joining the can do groups i think anything about can do do a direct message on the facebook page and we can have that that conversation um whether it's about joining or just generally about what can do does and what it is um obviously the the video would have helped to to articulate that, but I think that's one we can pick up afterwards. Um, Sally has mentioned listening to your body and feeling out of control. Few people have commented on friendship, community, made in Ben's ATP group, and that Ben has made her fitter. So we've got some fans out there, Ben. Excellent. Hello, everyone. I, t- I did tell them to come, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are here. Force. Yeah. <laughs> um, Naomi, routine is definitely a challenge but certainly helps if you make it work. I think around routine and habits we've all been saying. Um, so someone saying technology has been so great to reach out and to keep in contact with others. I've been isolated in a room for two years. So I've tried to help as many people deal with the isolation anxiety issues that were developing. So that's been my silver lining to my situation. That's really interesting because I think there are people that are home for different reasons a lot of the time. And there's a sense of now the world understands, you know, it's a, the way that education and work and leisure has all come online more than ever to our homes. There's been people calling out for that for years. So there, there have been this sort of positive sides as well, I think. I think it's quite a leveler as well for people with disabilities because, you know, in the world of work, there was always this kind of like barrier for accessibility um, and the, the, you know, the introduction of Zoom and that being a common thing gives gives us a much easier chance to be on a level playing field with other people then. 
you know, if, you, if we're all working from home and you've got your own home adapted, there's no reason, um, you know, you can't compete for jobs with anyone else really. And that, I know we're not really talking about jobs, but um, yeah, it's interesting to see how that has changed, um, you know, what we can aspire for um, as disabled people as well. Yeah, well, we talk a lot, you know, in different formats about the value of disabled people, you know, the talent and the, the contribution. And I guess that's been, as um, as the person's comment I just read out before, you know, in that level that you mentioned as well, Rob, it's sort of disabled people have got skills in resilience and overcoming challenges. And so been able to, like this person said, maybe help others that were less used to this and less prepared for it. So that sort of flips the dynamic of how disability can be seen stereotypically by society. And, you know, we're actually tooled up to cope with this more than some non-disabled people are. Cool. So um, Jax is saying how, <laughs> one not so serious question, how to bench press a stockpile of toilet paper. I think that was when you were doing your home item workout then. I, have, have you, I mean, I've, as you were talking of it there, like, I guess there are weird and wonderful things people can use to work out with, right? Yeah, like, uh, I was saying to people, if, like, if you don't have a set of dumbbells, and it it is really difficult to get hold of a set of dumbbells, I've been trying to get 10 kilograms now for about six months and not been able to, uh, they're just out of stock everywhere, but, like, if you're just starting out with it, you can just use two drinks balls, fill it up with water, and then just, you know, grab those and go. It's, it's something that's better than nothing, so... Yeah. Yeah, I can see a drink spot there next to you, so uh, get lifted in, Marcel. <laughs> um, so last of the, the bits that have come in um, from, from the live comments and questions, and then we'll come for all of you for any final thoughts before we wrap. So um, one is, are there any recommend, recommended recommendations for good online mental health resources, particularly as can't currently meet face-to-face, face, perhaps some apps? So I think they're generally around mental health resources, whether it's apps or books. I know you gave that recommendation of the book earlier, Mel, but yeah, any broader signposting for people if they want to look a bit more there? Yeah, I think um, obviously there's a lot of help and support on our website um, and our Facebook page, and we have links to therapists that have some sort of disability experience. Um, A lot of therapists are now working online so that, you know, many people have come to our service and said well I just had to go with the therapist that was the only one that was accessible in my area you know even though they weren't the right match um so working online does free up your you know you have a lot more choice um there's a lot of people who say they don't prefer it they prefer to meet in person there's something around uh, eye contact is different and the presence is different online Mm. um but again I think like Ben was saying sometimes it's better then nothing, you know, at least there is support out there. Um, so um, you probably our, web, our website and Facebook group are a good place to start. And, and people can email, me, stuff on the people can email me through there and I'll uh, try and support them that way. Mm-hmm. We've also got a list, uh, a free self-help members area. Um, and we have lists of like books and websites and magazines that are kind of disability affirming. So... Uh, there is lots of out there, but you need to know where to find it. It's not kind of mainstream. Sure, sure. Cool. Well, Ben, Rob, anything you want to add to that question or anything else, just more you know, broadly as a as a summary? We'll come to you first, Ben. Yeah, I was just uh, along the same lines of uh, books. The one that I've read, and it's a Japanese principle called Ikigai, uh, and it's all about finding something in life that gets you up in the morning. That's kind of the, and it's a combination between these four different elements that, you know, is that helping you get up in the morning. And that's what I've found through adaptive form is that is my guy. And I'm sure others can say with what they do, it's the same thing. It's the, th- it's the reason to get up a bed in, out of bed in the morning. So if anybody is looking for more book recommendations, that's one I can definitely, and it's, again, it's a nice small book. So you don't have to be there for <laughs> hours and hours reading it. <laughs> Well, we've got we got a few months of winter, so yeah, plenty of time <laughs> to get some some good books in. And uh, thanks thanks for that, Ben. Anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, um, I think that's uh, I think it's been really helpful today's session. Um, hearing every, what everybody's saying and how they're going through it, and uh, it's yeah, it's it's really good. And uh, yeah, 
looking forward Perfect. to the, re the rest of these sessions yeah definitely well, with a bit more of that to come at the end as well we've got a, a promo video i believe on that side but over to you rob for final thoughts from your side um i don't for, unfortunately i don't have a book to recommend um, oh rob <laughs> <laughs> what about a good what about a good wine <laughs> good wine maybe yeah um we've been pretty much flat out through lockdown so um with all the various different sort of pulls on your your time um, I think it's just important to know, to sort of spend some time analysing what does make you um, happy, what does make you motivated, what things are a struggle, and spend a bit of time just realising what they are and how you can sort of avoid the things that are difficult for you, um, you know, mentally, and also use the things that do give you a boost as much as you can. And some of those may not be available to us at the moment, but making adaptions on, on those things that do make you have a boost in your mental health uh, and doing them as much as possible. Um, I think Mel was talking about just going out and being outside. Um, and I think sometimes just little things like, rather than having to try and get somewhere, you know, there's often at the moment, there's not somewhere we're trying to get to, but actually when you've got little kids, you know, sometimes the journey of walking through a park and stopping at every single little stick and stone and little leaf and picking them up and giving them to daddy, all those things, rather than sort of seeing that as, you know, let's get to the place we're trying to go to quickly, try and enjoy that in the moment and actually um, enjoy the time that we've got extra to do that when maybe we're not on a rush to something because that thing is not happening at the moment, mm. but we're just outside, being outside and, and appreciating what we've got around us. Yeah, well said. Thank you, Rob. And uh, Mel, final thoughts from you? Yeah, just linking into what Rob's saying. Um, I often use the, the metaphor of the battery, so to help people visualise that kind of in and out. is like, you know, image about you being a battery and what stuff is draining you and what we need to be doing now is looking at the other side, what stuff is going into your battery. And like Rob's saying, being mindful and enjoying the process of, you know, just washing, having a nice shampoo, um, doing yoga stretch like Ben has said, um, doing some exercise, taking your time cooking, you know, uh, enjoying your spider friends or whatever creatures are in your house. <laughs> We've got some hedgehogs outside as well that I'm feeding, you know. <laughs> it's just making the most of the resources you've got available to you, really. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, we've had a good session. We've all boosted our mental and physical well-being for sure um everyone watching thanks for for tuning in and hope you got a lot out of it and some different inspiration and ideas around this this topic and thanks to ben mel rob for all your valuable input um it's been really good fun with you the three of you um i know that coming up because this is one of a trilogy if we want to get a bit of star wars about it um we're going to have getting the most out of home life is the next one and then we've got access in the outdoors is the third one and i believe we're going to finish in a minute with a video that will give you a bit more information about that but um yeah guys feel free to watch it back and go through those amazing two sessions for those particular practical things and obviously we've got a load of book recommendations for you to keep you busy for the rest of the decade probably and um yeah just really big thanks to everyone involved in making today happen and we'll see you again next time thank you very much for watching bye bye